Hello and welcome back and today I want to talk to you guys about Synology Drive. Now this is something we have talked about on the channel before. Whether you're watching this video because it's the first time you've ever really got your hands on some Synology hardware or you're a long-standing Synology user, I think a lot of people don't realise how versatile Drive is and some of the benefits it has to those of you that as much as you love the user interface of your Synology NAS, it has to be said that the majority of us want to use our own file folder structure. We want to use our own systems, our own first party software, our own pre-made way of doing things, but we want to work with the NAS. And with Synology Drive, what it does is it creates a folder on your system and that folder can be interacted with in a number of intelligent ways from file pinning to file streaming and giving you a one portal access point to all of your data, be it via the web browser or here via your own file manager, in my case on a Windows uh, setup. Now, in today's video, I'm going to do two things. I'm going to show you guys how to set up Synology Drive for the first time, and then I'm going to go through some of the benefits. But in order to do this video effectively, I want to set up Drive, and that's what I'm going to be using this video for. So, I'm going to assume, if you've already got your 1520 or indeed any, any Synology now set up, that before you get to this point in the video, you have the following. That you have your operating system already installed on the NAS, the DSM, in this case 6.2. Before going any further on this video, however, let's assume you've done a few things already in order to take advantage of it. And go ahead with your installation and enjoyment of Synology Drive. First and foremost, make sure that you've got the full Disk Station Manager software and RAID set up on your NAS done already. This means that you'll be able to access the NAS via the web browser like so and that you can go into the Storage Manager and you've set up your RAID in advance. Now, for my later video, I'm going to be using caching, but I'm not going to enable cache at the moment. What we need, however, is just to make sure that we've got a RAID arranged. Make sure you've got your hard drives installed and that you've got them set out in the right RAID for you, in my case, an SHR. Once you've done that, the next thing you're going to need to do is to head up to the Package Center. In the Package Center, you need to look for an application known as Synology Drive. If you scroll down, it's very easy to find Synology Drive, and there is Synology Drive Server. Go ahead and install this application. And this is technically more than one application, as it will also install Synology Drive ShareSync. If it doesn't install that, scroll down and you will find this application amongst others. This is where you're going to be conducting Synology Drive in the background if you've got multiple teams of people. As you can see, there's also the admin console where you can configure Drive later on. I'm going to leave that for now. Once the app is installed, the next thing you need to do is head to the control panel here. If you don't do this next step, Synology Drive will still direct you to do this. But head into the control panel and then go to user. In the user settings, go to advanced and then scroll to the bottom and enable home service. Also, select the volume on the NAS that you're going to be utilizing. So once you've set up your RAID storage pool, you'll be invited to create a volume. Make sure that's set up here and then click apply. You've even got the option of a recycle bin, which I'm choosing to disable for the sake of my tests in an upcoming video. Then click apply when you're done. Once that's done, you're largely there for the beginning of creating Synology Drive as a means of synchronizing your storage across multiple devices. If you look at the Synology Drive tool, you're able to see that you can access now the folder structure of your Synology and the Drive folders. On the NAS, normally you'd go into File Station, you have your directory of storage here on the left, and if you go in, you can access certain directories, files, and folders. But with this rather limited interface, it makes interacting with files a little tougher. Also, accessing and opening certain files is by no means as fluid as using either the proprietary photo, video and music application from Synology or the single portal access point here that I would compare to the likes of the user interface of Dropbox and Google Drive. Everything from photos being accessible very easily and quickly with lots of thumbnail, copy and share options all built in. It's an incredibly versatile tool. But the real benefits of Synology Drive aren't just here. 
The real benefits are when you synchronize this platform with your host client system. And to do that, we need the Synology Drive client application. There's two ways to go about it. You can download the client directly from your Synology NAS. Also on the bottom left of the screen, it may be obscured by a graphic, I apologize. There will be the option to download the Synology Drive app there. Alternatively, go to the download center, enter the details of the NAS you've got, go to the desktop utilities option, and right there on the second option is the Synology Drive client. It's available for Windows, Mac, and Ubuntu Linux systems, and you can download it and install it nice and easily, very quickly, and it doesn't cost anything. Once it's done, you can open up Synology Drive directly from your interface. If it's not already created a thumbnail, you can go ahead, click in the option, or just type the word Drive, find it, and click there. The first thing it will do is try to find your NAS on the local area network. So if we leave there on the web browser, the options for the NAS while we're doing this, don't worry, you don't need to keep this open. Open up here, click Start Now, and say what kind of interaction that your clients and indeed yourself are going to have with this device. Are you going to be having it that each of the individual PCs, Macs, uh, Linux, Ubuntu, and other machines are just backing up to this folder on the NAS, or is it a synchronization where whatever the data is inside this folder or this structure of folders on the NAS is also accessible on every connected machine? In the case of my testing, I'm going to be doing a two-way synchronized task. Click there, and then it will ask you to find the NAS on your local area network. You've got two options. Either enter the IP which is the address in the URL um, of the NAS on your local area network, or if you've created remote access by utilizing Synology's Quick Connect and Synology account for worldwide access to your NAS safely, you can go ahead and enter your Quick Connect ID here. If you're having difficulty finding the NAS or knowing the IP, just click the spyglass and it will search your local area network for NAS devices in the local area. As you can see, it's found several in my area, but the one we're looking for is the 1520p. We select that, and then we enter our login credentials here. Once we've entered them, we can choose whether we want to enable SSL data encryption, and I'm gonna leave that checked, although it's not going to be a safe connection where I am right now, because you may have noticed I'm accessing remotely with TeamViewer due to the ongoing pandemic and having to work remotely. Another huge benefit of Synology Drive for those of us that are working from home. I'm gonna proceed anyway, but that's a concern some businesses may wish to address if they'd like to keep their data super encrypted. Now next, it will ask you what folders on the Synology Drive you want to synchronize with the local computer. In my case, I'm gonna leave it as the default option for the drive but you can change that folder to any one of the folders that you've created in that tree of folders, the breadcrumbs there. Same goes for my local folder on the PC. But the real benefits of Drive is that you won't automatically take up all the space on your PC with the synchronized folder. That's to do with file pinning and file streaming that we'll touch on later on. If you go to the Advanced tab, you can change which files and folders you want to synchronize. You can even ensure certain parameters that stop some folders being synchronized, adding filters for where if you have files that are too big, such as database or multimedia files that you don't want to synchronize, but you do want to save documents, spreadsheets, and more, you can add extensions to remove and add them all the way through the synchronization and you can change which way the synchronization goes so that you only affect changes on one or both sides as you see fit. If you're running a multi-user setup with multiple devices synchronizing with the Synology Drive, chances are you may only want to conduct a one-way sync to enable the NAS to maintain full records of all data created while at the same time preventing data being overwritten. There's different utilities for different users, but nevertheless, I would certainly recommend enabling on-demand sync, as it's a great feature, and one that we're gonna to touch on later in the video. From here, click Next, and it will double check that this is the folder that you want to utilize with, or maybe you want to synchronize it immediately or later on. 
For now, I'm going to click Done. And now the synchronization is going to start. On the bottom left of the screen, and again, there may be a graphic in the way, you can see Synology Drive Client is running there in the background. And it's synchronizing this two-way synchronization between the Synology Drive and my local PC. Now we've created this synchronization and installed the tool, if we go back into this directory, this new option has appeared here. Synology Drive on the left-hand side in the breadcrumbs. It will also be av available amongst your document settings too. Now from here, your new drive is being synchronized here in the background. This folder will appear on every single system that you choose to synchronize with the NAS, be it over the network or via the internet. Go into this folder and as you can see, if we move this to the side and go back onto the NAS, we're able to see in this folder, let's go back into Drive, that the directory on the NAS via the web browser is the same directory here on the right hand side of the screen between my local computer and the NAS. So now we've set up Synology Drive. Not only does it give you full access via the web browser on a tailored one portal access point, but on top of that, we've now got that local copy with the NAS so we can use our systems and our way of doing things. But you may have noticed this little tab here called status. Status is how we choose which files live on the NAS. For example, if we highlight all of these folders and go to properties, we're able to see that although this data occupies 2.33 gig currently as synchronization takes place, it's only taking up 300 or so megabytes. The reason being is we're not pinning all the files. So for example, if we go into images and VMs, we can see that these are the images that I use in some of my uh, virtual machine videos. If we look at the Ubuntu VM and go to properties, we're able to see that the size of the file is 1.98 gigabytes, but the size on the computer right now is zero. That's because this file lives on the NAS and we can see that the file exists, but we're not interacting with it. And from here, we have some options. If we right click, go to the Synology Drive option, we can choose to pin a local copy permanently if we choose. This means that this file will be synchronized and downloaded to the local PC for constant access. The minute you access a file for the first time, that file will automatically be downloaded. This just allows us to permanently make sure that certain files always live on the computer and others aren't. You can even choose to browse um, previous versions of a file that has changes if you're running synchronization where differential backups or versioning takes place within Synology Drive. And finally, you have the option to get a link to this file to share with other users on the network. If you're accessing this file with your Quick Connect ID, you're able to use that to give people internet level access. And you can change all kinds of parameters from the length of the validity of a file to the users that have access to it. It is a versatile tool and it's incredibly straightforward. If we go back to photos, you're able to see that in this folder, all of these files are available and we can zoom in to some of the edited 100 megapixel files that we dealt with before. This is a file on the NAS and it's a 100 megapixel photo that the screen recording software may be blurring on. And there you have it. That is how easy it is to set up Synology Drive and the benefits it has to both home and business users that want to utilize the Synology NAS but want to use their own third-party client OS file management to take advantage of it. Currently in the existing version of Synology Drive, file pinning and file streaming is only available for Windows systems, but we've promised improvements in Synology's DSM-7 and Synology Drive supporting Mac file pinning and file streaming, this is going to get better. But otherwise, stay tuned for my content regarding 1520 Plus and the NVMe SSD caching performance video. Check that out, it's coming very soon, uh, if not already. Otherwise, click like if you've enjoyed this video, click subscribe to learn more, and I'll see you next time.